Salaam alaikum. Beloved brothers and sisters and friends of our radio audience, welcome to our weekly broadcast, Mr. Muhammad Speaks. This is the only weekly radio program in America uh, that teaches the Muslim religion, the age-old religion of Islam, the religion of our forefathers. And these weekly broadcasts are designed specifically to bring spiritual enlightenment to our people, the so-called Negroes of America. This is Minister Malcolm X of New York City, substituting for the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and speaking this week from Muhammad's Mosque No. 15, which is located at 444 and a half Edgewood Avenue here in Atlanta, Georgia. Atlanta, Georgia, the gateway to the Deep South. And we are happy to be here this, uh, this week with uh, Mr. Muhammad's faithful, hard-working Atlanta representative, Minister Jeremiah X, who is doing a wonderful work, not only here in Atlanta, but throughout the Deep South. And our people here in the South are ready for a change. They want a religion that will give, give them a, a salvation, which includes freedom, justice, and equality uh, here in this life and right here on this earth. And realizing that the Christian church has failed them, they are turning back toward the religion of Islam the religion of our forefathers, the religion of the East. While we were members of the religion of the East, while we were members of the Christian church, we were rejected by the segregated churches uh, of our slave master. In fact, we even failed to find unity and brotherhood in the churches among our own kind, among our fellow, our fellow, our fellow ex-slaves who call themselves Christians. When we were in the Christian church, no one wanted us, and we didn't even want ourselves. We were greatly divided. We rejected friendship and brotherhood among ourselves. We rejected friendship and brotherhood among our own kind. But as Muslims, under the, the divine leadership of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, our religion is Islam, the religion of the East, the religion of Africa and Asia the religion of our, of our own people back home today. And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us that this was also the religion of our forefathers before they were brought here 400 years ago to this land of bondage, in chains, to be made slaves by our slave masters whose religion was Christianity. But most important of all, Islam is God's religion. Islam is the religion of all the prophets. Islam was the religion of Noah, the religion of Lot, the religion of Moses, and the Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us that Islam was, even, was, was the religion even of Jesus. As ex-slaves here in the land of our, our bondage, even though we become baptized, and uh, even though we became baptized and accepted our slave master's Christian religion and became active members of the church, as Negro Christians we found no love. We found no unity, and we found no brotherhood. But today, simply by accepting the divine leadership of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, immediately we have 725 million uh, Muslim brothers and sisters in Africa and Asia, in Asia in the brotherhood of Islam. Think of that, beloved brothers and sisters, especially those of you who are here in Atlanta, Georgia this evening. Simply by accepting the divine leadership of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, immediately we have 725 million Muslim brothers and sisters in Africa and Asia in the Brotherhood of Islam. And despite the, the repeated failures of our former church and fraternal leaders to bring about love and unity among our people here in America, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad with the religion of Islam is giving us true brotherhood, not only among ourselves, but with, but with our people back home in Africa and Asia. By following the Honorable Elijah Muhammad's divine teachings, not only do we have true friendship among ourselves for the first time since the 400 years we were brought here into slavery, but for the first time we have a leader, a divine leader, a religious leader, uh, who has connected us or rejoined us with our people in the East. Simply by giving us a universal religion, he has given us universal recognition in a universal brotherhood. 
the, uh, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad has taught us that the religion of Islam is, is, the, is the universal religion. The, the religion of Islam is a universal religion in which we serve the universal Father, the universal God. The universal creator, the universal God of the universe, the, the God, the God that created the universe, the supreme being, uh, uh, who, who, who we've been taught by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, whose personal and proper name is Allah. The, the personal and proper name of the universal God, the, the God that created the universe, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us that his personal and proper name is Allah. And he is the God. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us that uh, he is the God, Allah is the God of our forefathers. He, he, he teaches us, uh, and when I say us, beloved brothers and sisters here at Muhammad's Mosque in Atlanta, Georgia, and those who are listening to this broadcast across the nation, when I say us, I mean the 20 million ex-slaves, the second class citizens here in America. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad has taught us that Allah is the God of our forefathers. And that our God, Allah, is one God. And when you know that your God is one God, automatically one means a unit, or it means unity. And when you believe in one God, automatically you have unity and love and brotherhood. Uh, because you recognize this one God as the universal father of everyone in the universe. And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad has taught us that uh, one of the reasons that we didn't have uh, unity in our midst in the past was because we didn't know one God. We had no knowledge of a religion in which uh, the people or the followers or the believers were taught about one God. Uh, in the Christian church, the, we were taught about three gods. We were taught that God the Father, to believe in God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. This was confusing. This, this is represented to us as, as a trinity. And it, uh, it's comparable to the triad uh, of the ancient of the uh, ancient church, uh, of the ancient of the uh, ancient Romans and the ancient Greeks, who were paganistic, who were heathen. They also believed in a trinity or a triad, or they believed that God was three in one. But the Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us that three in one is a division, and to say that God is three in one. Uh, and those who know mathematics understand that that represents division. And whenever you have uh, a religion that makes God a, a, a trinity or who divides the Godhead or uh, uh, places emphasis upon division automatically, those who believe in that type of religion uh, in, are in disunity and are in confusion. And no one is a better example of that than the 20 million so-called Negroes there in America who in the past believed in the religion of Islam. It brought about confusion among our people. No matter what we tried to do, we were divided, we were in disunity because we were brought up in religious confusion. We weren't even allowed to ask questions. Anything that we didn't understand, we couldn't question. Anything that we didn't believe, we couldn't even challenge it. And uh, uh, this was contrary to uh, intelligence and is contrary to what uh, one of the greatest uh, exponents of the gospel in biblical history, a man named Paul. It's contrary to what Paul thought, because according to the Bible, Paul uh, said, prove all things. Paul said, prove all things and hold fast to that which is true. Now, beloved brothers and sisters here in, in Atlanta, Georgia, at Muhammad uh, Mouth number 15, if you and I had, under, had, had actually gone and studied what Paul said and had an understanding of what Paul taught when he was representing Jesus, when he was spreading the gospel of Jesus, then we would have a better understanding of what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is teaching the 20 million black people, the ex-slaves here in America today. Because when Paul said, prove all things, he right there showed that he taught the same gospel that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is teaching here in America. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad says you must prove all things, that God doesn't have a religion that you can't question. God doesn't have a religion that creates confusion. God in no way would give a religion to the people of earth that brings about confusion and disunity. And anything you can't question, anything you can't uh, uh, question, you can't study it. Paul saying, what do we mean when we say prove? The Honorable Elijah Muhammad says, when you prove a thing, you test it. You study it. You examine it. You probe into it. You question it. 
And Paul didn't say question some things. Paul said question all things. And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that the so-called Negro here in America in the past had questioned all things, had tried to prove all things, as Paul warned you and me to do, then you and I would not be in the condition that we have been in for the past 400 years. But by accepting the Honorable Elijah Muhammad as our religious leader and teacher, for the first time in 400 years, we have someone whom, whom we can ask questions and get answers, intelligent answers. Upon hearing the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, for the first time since being brought, into the land of slavery 400 years ago, away from the Muslim world, uh, we have heard a religious message that has appealed to our reason rather than to our emotion. In the past, the church leaders appealed to our emotion. But the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, in teaching the black people of America, the 20 million so-called Negroes, the ex-slaves who have been relegated to the a row of second-class citizens who have been deprived of, of civil rights here in the land of the free, in the home of the brave. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad uh, is teaching us today. He All he asks of us is, let us reason together. Whereas in the past, our religious leaders told us, or rather they taught that which appealed to our emotion. Uh, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad differs greatly from them in that. He says only to the so-called Negroes of America, let us sit down and reason together a divine leader and a divine teacher who says only to America's 20 million confused, downtrodden, misled, and misthought so-called Negroes, come and let us reason together. Beloved brothers and sisters, here at Muhammad's Mosque in Atlanta, Georgia, and those who are listening to this broadcast across the nation in our radio audience, life is really beautiful and worth living once you, once you let the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad enter into your heart. Once you let the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad enter into your mind, once you let the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad enter into your soul and drive away all ignorance and superstition and fears forever. Many of you will jump up and say, but, but he, uh, uh, what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is teaching is against the Bible. It's against the church. It's against Jesus. And the only people in America who can say that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is teaching against the Bible or that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is teach teaching against the church are those who have not yet heard what, Mr. what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is teaching. Is the Honorable Elijah Muhammad against the Bible? Get your Bible. Those of you who are, are listening in our radio audience, get your Bible. Get it quickly. Let us examine some of what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches uh, in, 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 the, in, in, in the light of the Bible and compare it with that which is in the Bible. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad doesn't uh, uh, teach against the Bible, but for the first time since you and I have been in America, we have someone in the person of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad to explain the Bible to us, and who is also defending the righteous and noble brother and prophet of God known to you and me as Jesus. Many of you will laugh at us. Many of you have laughed at us because... The Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us that it's time for America's 20 million so-called Negroes to awaken and unite and build a heaven uh, for our people here on this earth instead of waiting until after we die to try and inherit some uh, fool's paradise up in the sky above the clouds. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us that any time uh, you look forward to a uh, paradise in the sky above the clouds, that that's a fool's paradise. And he teaches us those of us here in America who are called Negroes, those who have been despised, those of us who have been despised and rejected by in the, right here in the house of bondage by the very people whom we have shed our blood on the battlefields of Europe and Asia to defend. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us that it is, that it is foolish of us to continue to look forward to a heaven someplace or a paradise some, some, somewhere in the great beyond up in the sky above the clouds. Some of us, uh, some of us, uh, uh, some of you even accuse the Honorable Elijah Muhammad of being anti-Christian because he teaches that Negroes should have a heaven on earth right now. Think of that. Imagine teaching a, a religious man such as the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Imagine accusing the, uh, a, a religious man such as the Honorable Elijah Muhammad uh, of being anti-Christian uh, or anti-Bible or anti-Jesus or anti-God or anti-heaven simply because he teaches America's 20 million ex-slaves that it's time for you and me to unite and try and build a heaven for ourselves right here on this earth in this life. You think this contradicts the Bible. 
But you think it contradicts the Bible only because no one really qualified. In the past, you've had no one really qualified to teach you what the Bible actually says. Your religious leaders themselves uh, had never had never been taught these things. And by them not knowing these truths, they couldn't teach them to you. Therefore, as the Bible says, when the blind leads the blind, everyone ends up in the ditch. And no one will deny that the American so-called Negro has been here in America in a political ditch, in a social ditch, in an economic ditch, uh, in a spiritual ditch, in a mental ditch, a rut for the past 400 years. And you and I have turned to everyone for some type of answer uh, to, or some type of solution to this serious problem, and we've turned to everyone in vain. But God himself, whose personal and proper name is Allah, uh, the God of our forefathers, the God of our forefathers, uh, just as when in the days of, uh, back in the house of bondage in the, in the, under, the, under a wicked king named Pharaoh, when God's people were, uh, had gone astray and were uh, ex-slaves and were being deprived of their rights, God raised them up someone from their midst to lead them, to put them on the right path and to bring them back into his arms. And in the same way, in Babylon, when the Hebrews were taken into captivity and they had fallen and gone astray and knew nothing about their own, God raised them up someone, always, beloved brothers and sisters, according to this very Bible that you say you believe in. Whenever God's people go astray, Whenever they become uh, victimized or fall into the clutches of someone who is not their friend and are being oppressed and taken advantage of, God always steps into the picture and gives them a leader and gives them a teacher. And today, your, the God, uh, Almighty God Allah, the God of your and my forefathers, has given the misled and mistaught Negroes of America, who are referred to as the lost sheep there in the Bible, but Almighty God, Allah, the God of your and my forefathers, has given us a divine leader and teacher from himself for the sole purpose of teaching the truth, giving a divine light to those of us here in America who for the past 400 years have walked in spiritual darkness, have walked in mental darkness. And the main mission and aim of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad here in America today is to awaken the lost sheep, to unite the lost sheep whom Almighty God has taught the Honorable Elijah Muhammad are uh, referred to in the Bible, are uh, referred to today as Negroes and who are referred to in the Bible as the lost sheep. Beloved brothers and sisters, I told you to get your Bible. Those of you in our radio audience, uh, let's see what uh, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad actually teaches. It is true that he teaches those of us who follow him that there's no life or no heaven uh, beyond the grave. He teaches us that God told him, Almighty Allah, who is his teacher, who is his backer, who is, who is the one uh, responsible for having sent him, who raised the Honorable Elijah Muhammad up from the depths of ignorance and the muck and mire of this wicked civilization. God, whose proper name is Allah, has taught the Honorable Elijah Muhammad that there is no life beyond the grave, that there is no heaven beyond the grave. And once the black people of America realize this, then immediately their mind comes out of the sky. And they stop thinking about some point in the great distant future, in the great be, uh, beyond, and they come together here on this earth and will try and do something for themselves. But as long as you teach the ex sleep that after he dies, his troubles will be over. After he dies, he'll have a mansion in the sky. After he dies, he'll wear long white robes and golden slippers and a golden crown. After he dies, every day will be Sunday. He won't have to work anymore. After he dies, he'll drink milk and honey. Beloved brothers and sisters here in Atlanta, Georgia, as long as you believe in a religion like that, you'll be a slave forever. You'll be dependent forever. You'll be a beggar forever. Because you'll never be able to get together in this life and do anything for yourself as long as you're looking for it beyond the grave. So Almighty God himself has taught the Honorable Elijah Muhammad that there's no heaven beyond the grave for the so-called Negro. If you and I want heaven, you've got to listen to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and come together right now and start to do something for yourself. You've got to pool your academic know-how. You've got to pool your technical skill. You've got to pool your education. You've got to pool your effort. You've got to pool your finance, your wealth, and set up and do something for yourself and your people right now. And if you don't do it now, you'll never know what heaven is. Well, beloved brothers and sisters, some of you will jump up and say, but the Bible says when I die, my soul will go to heaven. And beloved brothers and sisters, this is where you have been misled. According to the Bible in Genesis, in the second chapter of Genesis, as, as we've been taught by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, 
uh, in the second chapter of Genesis and the seventh verse. Turn to it. In Genesis 2 and 7 it says this, And the Lord God, and the Lord God formed man of the dust of the earth, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. That's beautiful when you understand it. Look what it says. And the Lord God, the dust of the earth, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Notice what that says there, beloved brothers and sisters. It doesn't say that God uh, uh, gave man a soul. It says that after God had formed man uh, from the dust of the earth, he then breathed into this man's nostrils the breath of life, and that man himself did what? The Bible says he became a living soul. Well, what was it before he became a living soul? He was a dead soul. The Bible lets you, the Bible tells you that. The Bible doesn't say that God gave man a soul. The Bible says that God, that uh, when God formed man and breathed into his, made man breathe, put breath in man, that man became a living soul. But your intelligence, beloved brothers and sisters, can make you see that before man became a living soul, man was a dead soul. The book doesn't say that God gave man a soul. The book doesn't say that, that man has a soul. The book lets you know, if you are intelligent, that you yourself are a soul. As long as you're alive, you're a living soul. When you die, you're a dead soul. If you look out, uh, side, if I look outside the window of Muhammad's mosque here in Atlanta, Georgia this evening, and I don't see anyone, I say that, uh, that, I, that I don't see a soul. Which means what? I don't see anybody. I don't see a soul. I don't see anybody. Because body and soul are one, just like the Bible says. When the body is alive, it's a living soul. When the body dies, it's a dead soul. And this is important for the 20 million ex-slaves who are called Negroes, Christians, here in America to understand in this day and time. The book doesn't say that God gave you a soul that's going to leave here and go somewhere else after you die. The book lets you know when you've been taught, when your eyes have been opened by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, you can go into that Bible and see for yourself that the, all of the soul, all of your life, all of your heaven, all of your reward is supposed to be gotten right here on this earth in this life, if you understand. And no one among the so-called Negroes was wise enough to teach that to you and me until the Almighty God himself uh, raised up the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and revealed this truth to him. And today, it is this truth that's being revealed to America's 20 million so-called Negroes that's sweeping through America like wildfire in the religion of Islam. It is for this reason that the black people of America today are coming out of the religious institutions that neglected us and rejected us and, and uh, uh, failed to recognize us in the past and are turning back uh, to the religion of their forefathers, that age-old religion of Islam, the religion of Daniel, the religion of Moses, the religion of Lot, the religion of Noah, the religion of Jesus. And here in America today, the religion that God has given to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad for America's 20 million so-called Negroes. Beloved brothers and sisters, you know yourself, if you're poor, they refer to you as a poor soul. If you're rich, they refer to you as a rich soul. If you're educated, they say you're an educated soul. If you're dumb, they call you a dumb soul. But the thing that you must realize is that you yourself are a soul. And it's true, yes, your soul goes to heaven. But your soul goes to heaven along with your body. And you've got to have it right now while you're alive right here on this earth in this life. And no one has ever taught this to the so-called Negroes of America but the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And beloved brothers and sisters, if you think that this is wrong, turn to Job. Job in the seventh chapter of Job and in the seventh verse, it says, Oh, remember that my life is wind. You see that? Wind is breath. And it, and it coincides, with, uh, as the Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us, with exactly what is said there in the beginning of Genesis. That after God formed man from the dust of the earth, he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. The breath of life. And that man became a living soul. As long as he breathed, he had life. But when he stopped breathing, he was a dead soul. And Job here in the seventh chapter and the seventh verse says, Oh, remember, my life is wind. He, he goes on to say, mine eye, my, mine eye shall no more see good. The eye of him that has seen me shall see me no more. Once he's dead, you won't see him anymore. Thine eyes are upon me, and I am not. And that's true. When a man is dead, you can look at him, and you're not looking at him. He's not there. That's his cause. He doesn't have, if his name was John while he's alive, when he's dead, you don't even call him John anymore. No matter how much you love your wife, beloved brothers and sisters, 
When she dies, you call some strange man to come and get her, the undertaker. You don't care, you're not jealous, because you know that she's gone, there is nothing he can do to her, and there's nothing that she can do for you. This is just plain common sense, and this is what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us, and it agrees with what Job said. Look what Job went on to say, that the cloud is consumed and vanishes away. So he that goes down to the grave shall come up no more. He shall return no more to his house, neither shall his place know him anymore. And beloved brothers and sisters, you read the 14th chapter of Job in the 7th verse. I give you those chapters so you can read them for yourself. Read the 14th chapter of Job from the 7th verse on, and you'll see that what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is teaching. Read, the, uh, read, the, read in 1 Samuel. In the uh, uh, first Samuel, in the twelfth chapter, when David's son was sick, and David wept and prayed while his son was sick. But as soon as his son died, David stopped weeping and stopped praying. And when his servants asked him why, David answered and said, in the in first Samuel, uh, 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 he, say, he answered and said, twelfth chapter, that while the child was yet alive, I said, who knows, maybe God will be merciful and let the child live. But now the child is dead. Why should I fast? Why should I pray? I can go to him, but he cannot return to me. And beloved brothers and sisters, even David knew that that child couldn't come back. And David also knew the only way, or the only thing that happened is he would go where the child was. Not up in the sky, but down in the ground. And beloved brothers and sisters, again we say that you must know this in order to uh, do something for yourself here. And you, you must know this also to understand why the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is teaching the so-called Negroes of America as he is. As long as our people think that some, something invisible inside of them is going to go up in the sky after they're dead and inherit some great reward, you and I will never get together and do anything in this life for ourselves. So the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is teaching us here in America today that we've got to bring our minds out of the sky. We've got to stop thinking about three gods and dwell upon one God like Daniel did and like Moses did and like Noah and Lot did. We, Allah is one God. The Lord thy God is one God. And you and I should have no other gods before him. And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad says that the name of this God is Allah. And if you don't think Allah is God, when you say your prayers from now on, turn to the east and call on Allah. And Allah will let you know that there's no God but Allah. And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad here in America has been missioned by that God to bring you and me out of the condition that we're in. So, beloved brothers and sisters, write to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad at Muhammad's Mosque in, uh, at 5335 South Greenwood Avenue in Chicago, Illinois. Write to Muhammad's Mosque, 5335 South Greenwood Avenue, Chicago, Illinois. In the meantime, this is uh, Minister Malcolm X uh, down here in the deep south, Atlanta, Georgia, with Minister Jeremiah, where we're substituting for the Honorable Elijah Muhammad on this program, Mr. Muhammad Speaks. Hoping to be back with you at this same time next week, we greet you in the language of our forefathers, the beautiful Arabic tongue, Salam Alaikum.